Well, hello there, and welcome to my first ever favorites episode, where the idea is to share with you on a monthly basis patterns that are on my radar, uh, things that I'm into, be it knitting patterns, sewing patterns, what I'm reading, what I'm listening to, watching on TV, things that I think you might find inspiring or interesting or funny. You get the idea. So gather around, grab a cup of something, and, and let's chat favorites for June. Let's start with knitting patterns. Just want to say though that these are not patterns that I am considering casting on right away. They're just patterns that have caught my attention, ca struck my fancy, so to speak, and I would like to share them with you in case you would like to cast them on yourselves. And this was a pattern that was shared over in the history make-along thread over on Ravelry, which is our year-long make-along, and this was shared by KMMOH. On, on Ravelry, and she's knitting the 1930s open work jumper. It's a vintage pattern, and as you know, I am completely obsessed with sleeves. I am here for the sleeves, the poof sleeves, the the, the drapey sleeves, the all sleeves I'm, I'm obsessed with. And when I saw this pop up in that thread, I was like, yes, this is amazing. So added that to my queue. Uh, again, it's a vintage pattern, and it's available to purchase through Etsy. Uh, there's an online seller who has this incredible shop of or catalog of PDF patterns that you can download. Um, I will say though, if you are considering to tackle one of these patterns, the instructions aren't written as they are today in modern times. <laughs> they, there's, there's a totally different style that they adopted back in the day uh, that's kind of like uh, lots of flowery language. And also I should mention that the sizing is off. Um, this pattern only comes in one size, but it does give you uh, gauge instructions so you can size up or down as needed if that makes sense. So again, I will link to all of the patterns and things that I mentioned in this episode down in the description box below, but I thought this is a really great find, so yay! This next pattern, I have been texted, DM'd, and messaged from all angles about because you, you guys know me so well. Uh, this is a new pattern that was just published literally yesterday uh, by Fable Knitwear, and her designs are just so incredibly beautiful. She her work speaks to me on many levels because the, most of her patterns are inspired by uh, historical garments, uh, specifically the 1920s, uh, Edwardian times, and just it, it, her aesthetic is just so on point. Yesterday she published the Antiquity Blouse, which if you recall a couple of episodes ago, several episodes I believe, I had sewn the Armistice Blouse, which is a pattern by Folkwear Patterns, and it was a style of blouse that was very popular, uh, you know, during the late Edwardian times, early 1920s. And she actually designed or designed a knitting pattern in the same style. And of, of course, I'll pop a photo of it here so you know what I'm talking about, but I am on this like wildfire. So a big thanks to everyone who shared that link with me. While I can't cast it on immediately, it's definitely something that I plan to cast on in the near future once I get a couple of things off the needles first, but definitely check it out. As you guys know, I love Helen Stewart patterns and she just announced her mystery knit along for 2020. And I unfortunately am not gonna be able to hop on the mystery knit along. Uh, generally, I will say I do not enjoy <laughs> mystery knit alongs because I need to know what I'm getting myself into. But I did participate in her MCAL that she hosted two years ago. I believe it was two years ago for, ago for her impressionist shawl and I was not disappointed. I'm honestly never disappointed by any, Hel any of Helen Stewart's patterns because they're just so enjoyable and her aesthetic is, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to participate in this year's MCAL because again, I have a lot of stuff on the needle that I want to get off the needles, and one of those patterns happens to be a Helen Stewart pattern. So, uh, you know, I'm all set on the Helen Stewart front, but I'm excited to see what this year's MCAL knits up to be. Uh, so if that sounds something that you might be into, definitely check it out. I think if you purchase the pattern now, you get an early bird discount before the first clue is released on June 25th. So hop on that. Moving along to sewing patterns that are on my radar, I just purchased, da -da -da, I stumbled on this pattern right here, which is Butterick 3778, and it's a vintage pattern. Uh, it was actually published on the back of here uh, in 1986, <laughs> three years after I was born. I was only three at that time. 
But yes, uh, so I figured this is very similar to what an Edwardian tea dress might look like if I were to make one of these out of kind of like a lightweight cotton linen and do some lace insertion, I could easily have a history bounding Edwardian dress. You can have a lot of fun with floral prints and uh, yeah. I don't know, I saw it and I just had to order it. Um, again, it is a vintage pattern, so you can't purchase it directly from Butterick right now, I don't believe. I don't think you can, but if you hop on eBay or Etsy, you can definitely track one of these down. Um, and yeah, so it's just, a, it's supposed to be a nightgown, I believe, according to the description on, oh yeah, Mrs. Nightgown. But I mean, you could totally get away with this in this day and age. As a, as a normal dress, you know? And there is some pin tucking in here too. That is also an option, which I which is a technique I just learned. So very, very excited to make one of these in the near future. Speaking of history bounding, a new pattern that came on my radar after watching, what was it, the, the fold line, uh, which essentially is, I don't wanna call it the sewing version of Ravelry because it's, Definitely not that, but it is a database of uh, a one-stop shop where you can go purchase patterns and read reviews for patterns. It's, it's a really great, wonderful resource. I will say the website isn't perfect. There are a couple of glitches with it or things that I wish were better, but at the same time, it's a great resource for searching patterns and reviews and, and the like. But uh, this was on one of their most recent episodes, Kate, who hosts uh, the the Full Line podcast on, on YouTube. She announced a new pattern from... It's a pattern from Jennifer Lauren Handmade, which is an independent pattern company. And again, totally out of my comfort zone. I have, I rarely, if ever, wear pants. The only time I wear pants is during the summer when Dennis and I go to Cape Cod and I'm forced into nature. I wear shorts, but uh, in general, I do not wear pants. I've, I've dabbled in wearing jeans and I just, I, I can't be that person. It's not me. But when I saw the Bastion culottes, again, culottes, who am I? These actually remind me of a style of pant that was available for women during, again, the Edwardian times. Guys, I'm obsessed, I know. This, this should be become a drinking game. Every time I drop the word Edwardian, just, just do a shot of something. I don't know, have fun, uh, drink responsibly. But again, I squeed because they reminded me of this pattern that is actually also available through Truly Victorian, which is the more historically accurate version if you wanna go down that route. Um, and someone actually, again, in the history mall thread referenced this uh, this style of pant uh, because women started becoming more mobile. They started riding bikes and becoming more active. And you know, skirts did not really make that easy. So they they designed these patterns. I don't know who they are, but a style of pant or culotte was created uh, for women to wear when they were becoming more active doing things. So I'll try and pop some photos of it here so you can you know, see what I'm talking about. But this pattern by Jennifer Lauren Handmade completely echoes that style and aesthetic because when you look at it straight on, it does in fact look like a walking skirt. So I don't know, I'm, I might have to make a pair of these. So while tumbling down the Etsy rabbit hole, I did stumble across some interesting cross stitch patterns for those of you who like to do some counted cross stitch or embroidery. I know recently I just splurged on a whole bunch of embroidery and cross stitch supplies and I have yet to actually open the package and get into it. But anyway, uh, I did stumble on some really interesting cross stitch patterns that picked my interest and they might pick yours as well. Not to be Captain Obvious, but 2020 is turning out to be such a dud and a dumpster fire, which is why I got a pretty good chuckle when I stumbled on <laughs> this dumpster fire, this 2020 dumpster fire counted cross stitch pattern by Grateful Thread Crafts. I mean, I feel like I need to make this and just frame it on my wall. And just as a reminder, when good days finally do come back, I will have it as a reminder of how bad things got. I mean, you know. Anyway, I thought you guys would appreciate that. Uh, and also I did stumble on this other shop called uh, The Witchy Stitcher, who has <laughs> very darkly uh, comical witchy witchcraft cross stitch patterns for sale. and. I kind of want to make them all because, again, it's it, this. The, her patterns aren't for everybody. They are very dark and very, you know, witchcrafty. So if that's not your jam, I mean, just you know, a little, a little warning. I'll share a couple of her designs on the screen so you can get an idea. But yeah, I, I kind of want to make a couple of those, especially the bottle up emotion one because, yeah. <laughs> I believe those are all the patterns that I have to share with you this month. So moving on to, I guess, 
other things that I'm into, life stuff. Uh, I, well, first, the elephant in the room. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on camera, but I did, I dyed my hair. Correction, I undyed and re-dyed my hair because if you've been following this podcast for quite some time, you might know that I generally dye my hair black or just believe that my hair is naturally black because that's what I've been dyeing it for the past six years. However, I have not dyed my hair since last Christmas, so back in December. So I had a lot of root growth going in and once COVID happened, I don't know, I was still kind of teetering between letting, growing it out or dying, keeping it black and I don't know, I just kind of let my hair do its own thing for several months and I got bored. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna dye it dark brown, you know? But I will say getting black dye out of your hair is not an easy task. Anyway, I won't bore you with the details, but it was a lengthy process where I had to lift the, the black dye out, take down the brass tones, and then neutralize everything with a cool dark brown color. And here we are. So yeah, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it, but it is dark brown. Maybe I'll take some photos next time I finish an object and you'll, and you'll be able to see it better, but yeah. I'm, I'm very happy with, I'm very happy with it. So yes, anyway. Hello. As for other things that I'm into this month, uh, as you know, I'm dabbling back, you know, not that I ever stopped doing photography, but I'm getting back into learning new techniques, learning my equipment, and, you know, just diving down that rabbit hole again. And recently I signed up for a class on creativelive.com. Not, not endorsed in any way, just a fan, uh, because I am actually a fan of uh, Brooke Shaden's work. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she's a fine art composite photographer. So she does a lot of composite photography, which if you're not familiar, it's a technique where you superimpose, like you take one photo and then superimpose other objects from other photos and sources into, and create kind of like a collage, if that makes any sense, and make it look real. Um, so you have to definitely pay attention to lighting, to shadows, and just, you know, create a world, but also make it believable. And I love this concept so much. And I saw that Creative Live was having a sale one day and um, a class that was normally like $149 for $30. I'm like, I am sold. And I'm hoping to incorporate more composite photography into, you know, my photos. So having a lot of fun geeking out over that. Dennis and I have been watching Homecoming season two. It began as a podcast series uh, with, I think, David Schwimmer and some other famous celebrities that acted in it or that used their voices to act in it since it's an audio it began as an audio podcast but anyway uh they it got picked up by netflix and the first season had julia roberts in it uh and it's it's turning into one of those uh series where i, I feel like every every season they switch the main character or perspective. So Julie Roberts isn't in this in the second season, but this season they brought in Janelle and I'm completely blanking on her last name, but she's this incredible musician. She actually hosted the Oscars this year. Um, so she's acting in uh, season two of Homecoming and so is Joan Cusack, who I love, she's awesome. Um, and yeah, it's just, I can't, I don't, I don't know if you'd consider it sci-fi or maybe sci-fi. I don't know how to, what kind of genre show this is, but if you're into shows like Black Mirror, you might be into this. Uh, but yeah, it's really quick. We, I think we binge watched the entire season in two nights, two, three nights. I don't know. Each episode's like 25 minutes. So definitely bingeable uh, and I highly recommend it. There are elements where it reminds me of Hitchcock, the music that they use in there. It's very kind of eerie and suspenseful and what's gonna happen. Uh, so definitely, definitely check that out. And last but not least, I have been having so much fun binge watching Kuo Kika on YouTube. I mentioned her in a, a newsletter that I sent out a couple weeks or months ago, but she's just so fun to watch. I ended up binge watching a lot of her videos over the weekend and learned that she actually started out selling knitwear and fell into photography and now has this incredible YouTube channel that I, she just shares a lot of photography tips, especially, um, you know, shooting for Instagram. And she creates these really beautiful, really sweet, uh, creative, self-portraits and flat lays, again, using compositing. And yeah, it's just, she's so fun to watch. So I highly recommend if you're into that type of thing, check her out. But yes, I found myself binging pretty much all of her videos on YouTube over the weekend. Um, so yeah, anyway, check her out if that is something that you're into. Uh, but I believe that is all I have to share with you this month as far as favorites. Since I launched on Patreon, the goal has been to create more videos for this channel and play around with more ideas this being one of them. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this first favorites episode 
episode. I definitely want to do this every month and, you know, try some new formats and styles and, you know, we'll see where it goes. But let me know what you thought in the comments below. And that said, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!